Hey, in this video I wanted to show you how you can use Feet together with uh, 3.js to build a website and then deploy it to Netlify. So basically a typical workflow for working with 3D on the web. So the first thing we need is Vite. And actually the first thing we need is uh, Homebrew and NPM when we're on Mac. So on a Mac, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Spotlight and type in Terminal. And then what I should be able to do is type Brew. Um, and if I can do that, then I have Homebrew already installed. If not, what you have to do is go to brew.sh, then copy this line and paste it here in your terminal. Paste it, press enter. It's going to ask for a password. You do that and then you just follow the whole procedure. In this case, I've already installed that, so I don't have to do it again. With Brew, the other thing that we need to install is NPM. And uh, again, you can test for this. If you type NPM and it gives this, then it works. If you type uh, if you get command not found npm, then that means that's not installed. So to install that, we're going to write brew install node. Again, I already have that, so I don't have to do it again. Um, but these two tools are really necessary in order to get started with feed. And uh, there's another thing we have to do in the terminal in a minute, but we'll come to that later. So going back to this, if we click the get started button here, uh, we can scroll down a little bit and we can see that there's a bunch of templates that they want to do. In this case, we're going to use vanilla. So basically just JavaScript with no extra framework. Uh, and then there's this line here saying npm create feed at latest. Note that the dollar sign is not actually part of the commands. So the dollar sign, but sometimes it's also percentage sign, is already here. So you don't have to type that. So instead, we just co copy this and then we're going to paste it in a terminal. Now, it's important to understand with the terminal where we are. In this case, I want to put it on the desktop, but I'm not actually in the desktop. If I type pwd, for, uh, make it a bit bigger, for print working directory, you see I'm in the users fdb, which is my folder. Um, and if I type ls, you can see the folders that are there. What I want to do is type cd for change directory, desktop, and then that brings me into the desktop folder. Another way that I can do it, if I'm, my folder is somewhere deeper inside of the whole system, is type cd space and then drag the folder in where I want this to be. So in this case, the desktop. Uh, but in your case, it might be something else. All right, so now we're on the desktop folder. And now we're going to use this npm create feed latest command. So again, I've copied this, I pasted it here. Um, and then it's going to, uh, it could be that it's going to ask you to install uh, Vite. You can press yes. And then you can type the project name. In this case, I'm typing uh, Vite tree demo. Uh, this is the name that you want to give to your project. I can choose which framework. Again, we're using vanilla, which basically means no framework. And then the variant is JavaScript, not TypeScript. All right, so that's done. It goes really quickly. And then what we should see on the desktop is that we have our folder v3 demo with a bunch of files already in it. I'm not going to do these things here. I don't need the terminal actually anymore because I'm using the built-in one from Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to drag this over to Visual Studio Code, which should be here. Uh, yes, I trust the authors. And then here we can look at the package structure. But importantly, to get started, what we want to do here is go to Terminal, New Terminal. And that brings us up this terminal here. And here, and this is the important bit, we're already in the correct folder. So we don't have to do anything. If you type PWD, you can see that we are now in Users FDB Desktop and then Vit 3 Demo, which is the folder that we want. So I'm going to type npm install. That will install all the packages for me that I've used. In this case, it's just um, vite. And I can look at package.json. You can see this is the dependency that is required uh, for development. And then I can do npm run. Uh, and run me means running one of these scripts. And I'm going to run the dev script. And that's going to start a development server locally on this computer. And then it says, OK, I have a server here at localhost 5173. I can click this with the command, uh, with holding the command button and click this or just copy and paste that URL. That opens in your default browser. Uh, I like working with Chrome or Firefox, but if this opens in Safari for you, what you can do is copy and paste this URL and paste it in another site. Also, what I really like to do is right click and do inspect and have the console open always so I can look at what's going on. I can ignore this error. This is from a Chrome extension. Um, all right, so this is the V thing, and you can see I can click here. This is just JavaScript, so let's look at what's going on. There's the, the V thing always starts from the index.html file. So this is a very basic uh, blank index.html file 
we're going to change the title here to feed the tree demo. And then we have our app here. This is where our app gets rendered. And then we have our script type. And this is important. It says module here. And that means for Vite to pick this up and to compile it into one bundle. And then the source for that is at slash main.js. So it's this file. Uh, often what you also see is that these files will go into an SRC, like a source folder. Um, and then we have to change the name here. Uh, we're going to leave it as is now, just to keep things simple. Uh, and then if we go to main, so this is our main JavaScript uh, file, what we see is that we can use these imports here. And imports basically bring in other stuff. So instead of in, uh, writing the style sheet in index.html, we can write it here. The advantage of this is that in style.css, this now supports hot reloading. What that means is if I change the font size here, and I save, this will automatically update uh, the site here, which is the whole point. So if I change the color uh, to something else, you can see that the site automatically uh, updates. So that's the benefit. If it knows that these files are related to your project and that it watches for changes and updates that automatically. Um, but we don't need any of these except maybe for the style.css. So we're gonna remove all of that, uh, save, and now you see that the document is empty. Again, that's because this index.html is just rendered like this. So what we want to do here is basically do our 3.js setup. And in order to use 3.js, what we need to do is import it. So we are going to stop the Vite server for a minute to install uh, 3.js. So we hit Control C. Uh, so not Command, but Control C, that will stop the server. If you're confused with that button, you can also press the, um, the kill button here the garbage can and then go to terminal open a new terminal um, what we want to do is in, install a dependency and this is the benefit of using uh, vit and 3.js uh, or vit in this case is that we can do npm install and install our dependencies that way so the dependency is called tree so we're going to do npm install tree and that installs um, 3.js for us uh, and then we're going to run npm run dev the way that we can check that this is installed is that here in the dependencies it now says tree all right, now we have to use that. And in order to do that, I'm just going to go to the getting started here and just create our basic scene. We don't have to uh, do this except maybe for the margin of the body, but I think in the style that's already set. Let me check. Yeah, so here the margin is already set to zero, so that's fine. And then we are going to create our basic scene. And in this case, it's not very different. The only thing that we have to watch here is that we have to import these. So again, we have to import 3.js and the way that we do it is, is we import star as tree from tree and you see that copilot already told me that uh, and that gives me this object tree and then I from that I can do basically all the other things that I can import. Um, so I'm going to do the scene, the camera, uh, get our box here uh, so we have some basic things to render and then we have our animate loop to render our scene and that should be enough. Let me check. Uh, so going back to our demo here, yeah, so this is our scene setup here. You see that we get this weird um, weird thing to the side here. I think that's related to uh, the way that the styling is set up maybe. Yeah, so we have this app uh, object here. So we don't, we're not rendering in the app, so we can just remove that. And now we get the scene, uh, the full scene here. Okay, going back, um, we can animate the cube. So we can add this to our animate loop just to have something going here. Um, most of the time, put that here. Going back here. Again, we see our cube animating. Cool. Um, yeah, all right, cool. And then the other thing that I want to do is I'm going to comment out uh, this is use orbit controls just to show you. So I can do import uh, orbit controls from, and here, uh, sometimes the documentation is a bit unclear, but here what we have to do is do tree, and then normally autocomplete will jump in and tell you where it is. So it's in examples slash JSM slash controls slash orbit controls. Yeah. And the way that we set up orbit controls, uh, we can do it here, say const controls, con equals new orbit controls uh, and then we have to specify the camera and the DOM element 
and also here uh, we can do controls that uh, I think update um, right and now we should be able to yeah, use the mouse to control this and zoom in and zoom out all right cool um, one extra thing that I want to show you is how to use images because we uh, uh, want to do that as well so I'm quickly going to grab an image here from Unsplash uh, to put on my cube perfect and the reason why I do this is to show you where this image should go so this is uh, my texture um, so this could go in the v3 demo again this is on my desktop and then we put it in the public folder so everything that goes in the public folder will immediately be referenced um, at that location specifically uh, it's going to be referenced at slash my texture so we don't have to type in the public which is just going to immediately uh, go there and now what we can do where is our material here yeah is uh, here we can make a const texture loader equals the name texture loader um, and then yeah we say um, let's say my texture equals texture loader dot load and again here we have to do slash and then whatever the file was in public so I call it my texture.jpg note the e here that sometimes trips you up and then here for the, we have the color and then we can set a map as well so that map loads in the texture so going back to my file here yeah and okay you can tell here with the little dots here that I use texture loader like this but it doesn't actually work so I have to type tree dot texture loader uh, right and now that texture is loaded note that it's green because we have our color here set to green so if we set this to ff uh, we get our uh, white cube here and then uh, we can bring in the animation again all right so I think those are the basics for setting up a Vite project again using npm and create to create the project using npm install to install 3gs and then the assets go into public there's one last step and that's deployment so if we run npm and going back to a package JSON, we can see that we have a bunch of other scripts here we have def which we used build and then preview I never used preview uh, but build I use because npm run build actually uh, it's going to build the whole project and it's going to build that in the dist folder so if we go look at our desktop folder this we can see that this is our uh, dist folder here so it has the index.html and you see in the same folder it has my texture.jpg so everything in the public folder just immediately gets copied to that dist folder we also have this feed.svg file that we don't use and then in assets so this is a folder that feed made uh, specifically to put in the javascript and the css and this is all uh, compressed so it's all the javascript as just one big file uh, taking all the 3js code uh, and combining them and same for our css it's basically optimized the css so this is the folder that we want to deploy to Netlify and there's uh, two ways that we can do this this is the there's an easy way where we, where we just drag it in um, and then there's actually the better way I would say using github um, to set that up so I want to show you the github way because that's actually the proper way to do it um, again here there's two ways to do that uh, if you want to do it from Visual Studio Code which makes sense because we don't have any other things to install we can go to this tab called source control um, and then there's this button already seen publish to github so this is the one that we want to do um, so we can click here it's asking me to sign in with my login that seems to be working and then it's going to ask okay where do you want to publish it so I can publish it privately or publicly in this case it can be public uh, vt3 demo is the name of the folder so that's fine uh, oh it says it already exists too uh, because I've made this before and then it's making everything making a first version and then uploading it I can do open on github and look at that project so it says fit tree demo 2 cool so that's all my code here and uh, I'll make a change in a minute and we can see the update here and then going to Netlify I can do add new site import and then choose git uh, or github to import that and then it's gonna search through all my uh, projects I have a bunch so I'm just going to search here um, that often takes a while I'm not sure why uh, yeah this one and then all of the settings this is the convenient part are already set correctly so the 
build command here, the npm run build that we run ourselves gets built here, and then it's publishing this dist folder, which is exactly what we want. So we can press deploy site. Uh, that's going to give us a random URL to deploy under, in this case, tiny sunburst, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then it's going to deploy. Uh, we can actually, in the deploys uh, thing, we can actually see that it's deploying here. Sometimes they, it causes an error, and it might be interesting to look at that error. Okay, we're done, so we can click here. Um, and that's going to bring up our V3 demo. And again, we can zoom in, we see that our texture is loaded and everything works, cool. Um, and then in the domain settings here, if we want, we can change this and give it another name so it becomes, I don't know, v3demo.netlify.app or something. Um, let's quickly make a change just to show you how that works. So our camera position is now set to uh, five but I want to put it a bit closer to our camera initially. So if we refresh, oh yeah, this is important. So now, sorry, now what I've done is I've refreshed um, and you see it says the site can't be reached. And that's because this local service is no longer running. I showed you the npm run build thing, but now it's no longer running the dev server. So I do npm run dev. And this is also if you open the project again from Visual Studio Code is what you have to do again. So npm run dev, localhost 5173. And now I can refresh and see it again. And note that the cube is now much closer to the screen. And maybe I want it even closer here. Oh, oh, that's too much. Yeah, perfect. So I can see with these dotted lines here that this line has changed. And if I go to our source control tab and look here, you can see this line now became this line. So it's, the value is different. Uh, zoom in more. I can press commit. Uh, and then it, yeah, so what I should actually have done is press this plus button here, but if I don't, it's going to say, do you want to commit everything? So I'm pressing yes. And then I can press sync changes. And now what's going to happen is this is going to upload to GitHub. Netlify will notice that there's a new version here and it will automatically deploy that. You can tell from the deploys tab here in Netlify that it's now picking up this version. Note that I, the zoom in more comment that I typed you can see here as well, it's building this. This takes about a minute and then the site will be online here. Um, so yeah, it says published here. So again, we can click this URL and normally our cube should be bigger in initially and it is so. Right, so that's the whole um, step through the process. The same thing happens with custom shaders or materials or uh, GLTF files. You also have to uh, put them in that folder and then work with uh, uh, to work with feet. All right, I hope that was useful. See you in the next one.